to a video tutorial of Auction RPM. My name is Dan Zumwalt, and I'll be your guide through this discussion of bidder registration in Auction RPM. To begin with, we're going to visit the Schedule and Auction screen under the Auctions and Preparations menu. In the Schedule and Auction screen, you'll notice that we have this new sample auction that we've created in previous videos. If I look on the Details tab for this new sample auction, we can see several pieces of information, including the taxation, the approved payment types, and some other options and auction settings. But then if I look at the Marketing tab for this auction, you'll notice on the right-hand side that there are referral sources that are listed here. These are the referral sources that were used in this auction, and they represent methods that the auctioneer has used in advertising this particular auction. Now in this example, we have newspaper, radio, television, flyers, and word of mouth. But those aren't the only referral sources that are possible in Auction RPM. If I exit from the Schedule and Auction screen and go for, to Tools and Master Data, you'll notice that one of the master tables in the master table list here is referral sources and it is in this location where you can list all of the different referral sources that are possible and right now we have just newspaper for instance but if you wished to get a little more granular uh, identifying the ways that you advertised this auction you could s put not just newspaper but you could say newspaper dash green sheet or newspaper dash New York Times or the Antique Weekly or whatever is appropriate. Then what would happen is under Auctions and Schedule an Auction on the Marketing tab you can then identify how you actually advertised this auction. Now what relevance does this have with bidder registration? Well notice that if I exit out of this screen and under Auctions and Day of Auction if I click on Better Registration and then I select the new sample auction, I can see over here on the right hand side the different methods that were used in advertising the auction. During the process of registering a bidder, you can identify how this particular bidder heard about the auction, and then later, once the auction has been completed, you can then pull a report showing how well those different advertising venues have performed for you. This, of course, is the bidder registration screen that we're looking at right now. And one thing, you, the easiest thing to remember about bidder registration is that in order to register someone, you need three distinct things. Number one, you need to first identify which auction you're going to register a person for. Next, which buyer you're going to register. And then finally, what bidder number you're going to register. Now, first, you can see here that the new sample auction is already selected for us. It remembers that in previous screens that we visited, the new sample auction is what we selected there, and so it automatically selects the new sample auction here. If I wished to record uh, a registration for another auction, I could simply drop this list down and select a different auction. Next, what buyer are we going to register? If I click on the Buyer Lookup button here, I can see a complete list of all buyers that have ever attended any of our auctions. This, of course, is the ever-present auto-locator, and in this case, it's an auto-locator oriented towards the buyer master. Now, this list of buyers that we're looking at here, we only see three here because this is just our sample data. But you can imagine that over time, this list is going to get quite long. It could have tens, hundreds, or even thousands of buyer records that would be represented here. Well, it's for this reason why you want to make regular use of this arrowhead and the search field that's just above the list here. What I'm going to do now is for this new sample auction, I'm going to just go ahead and highlight the this record right here, the Biome and Hyam Company, because this buyer is a returning buyer. Uh, probably Biome at Hyam was at a previous auction, and so that's why they're already in the list. I'm going to highlight that buyer record, I'll hit select, and that will bring that buyer back to the bidder registration screen. I'll indicate over here on the right that they heard about us through the newspaper, and I'm going to indicate that I want to give bidder number one to Biome at Hyam. I'll go ahead and hit register now, 
and that will give me this screen here indicating that the registration is complete. The rule is nobody has been registered until you see red. I'll go ahead and hit OK now and now I'm allowed to enter in a registration for another person. In this case I'm going to hit buyer lookup again and I'm going to highlight maybe Joe Byer but or Stacy excuse me Susie Smith. In this case I'm going to highlight Susie Smith and you'll notice that Susie has a preferred bidder number, bidder number 21. So that even though the next available number that I want to use or that it's set up to use is 2 here, when I come back and I select Susie Smith in this Buyer Master Auto locator, you'll notice first of all that Susie has been marked as a VIP. This is a bidder registration message that's found under the uh, security tab in the Buyer Master record for Susie Smith. I'm going to go ahead and just hit continue. And now you can see that Susie Spit Smith has bidder number 21. It's automatically popped that in there. It knows that that's the number that Susie normally likes to use when they when she arrives at the auction. I'll indicate that Susie heard about the auction over the radio. I'll hit register and now Susie has been registered for the auction. At this point I'll go ahead and hit OK and now I'm ready to register another person. The next scenario is what if the person that we're registering right now has never attended one of our auctions before. I'll go ahead and hit buyer lookup again but instead of selecting a name out of the buyer master auto locator list I'm instead going to click on add new down here in the bottom right. Doing so will present me with a blank buyer record where I'll enter in information about this new buyer. Another option is the usage of the magnetic strip readers or the two-dimensional barcode readers that can read the backs of driver's licenses. Uh, for instance, right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to read the back of a driver's license and let's see what happens when I do that. So you can see now that now that I've read a driver's license, all of the information immediately shows up in the buyer master record. All I have to do now is type in the phone number uh, for this buyer and then hit save. And now that new buyer record has been created. And now I can go ahead and assign it a bidder number. Now you remember that Susie Smith was bidder number 21. Well, as a result, it automatically incremented the bidder number to the next available number after the last bidder number that I used. If I tried typing in 21 again here in this field, notice that a new uh, panel comes up to the right-hand side here indicating that it, uh, it has automatically incremented the bidder number. It doesn't let you assign the same bidder number to two different people. I'll indicate that this person heard about the auction through some flyers and now I'll hit register and of course we have our ever-present red message indicating that registration is complete. I'll hit OK and now we're ready to register the next person. If I click on this button up here in the upper right here I have the ability to see everybody that has been registered for the auction. If there's any change that needs to be done to any of the buyer's records for any of these uh, bidders that are listed here, I can double click on this line right here and by doing so that will bring up the buyer record for Susie Smith. Earlier I mentioned that there is such a thing as a bidder registration message found under the security tab. Well, if I go to the security tab for Susie Smith, you can indeed see that Susie Smith is marked as a VIP. You can also notice that there is an invoicing message that will pop up during the process of invoicing Susie indicating that it is okay to receive checks from Susie. I'll go ahead and hit save here. I'll hit return on this screen and now because I am done with bidder registration I'll hit cancel and that will return me back to the main menu. We've registered a few different buyers f uh, and given them bidder numbers uh, for the auction and so now we're ready to actually conduct the auction and prog uh, progress on to, better, to bid entry. Thanks for listening. If there's any questions that you have regarding this video or others, please don't hesitate to give us a call. The phone number is 209-588-1232. Thanks for listening.